Hi, my name is John Hartog. I'm a product manager with Autodesk focusing on our CFD products. And here's been a couple minutes with you today giving you the highlights on what's new in Simulation CFD 2014. So over the course of the past year, we spent a lot of time working with customers and getting a deeper understanding of what their needs and interests were. And from that, we built five focus areas for the 2014 product. And those were expanding the physics that the solver can tackle, opening up new workflows with other products, improving the navigation, allowing users to place the results in the cloud and their PDM system, and then lastly, expanding what's possible on the automation side. So we'll step through each of these and give you a sense of what we came up with. So in speaking with customers, it became clear that many of them had an interest in running what have traditionally been known as advanced CFD analysis. Now, one of the areas that came out of that was the free surface modeling, which is modeling the liquid boundary, as you would find in tank mixing, sloshing, or agitation, and then also in water infrastructure projects, like you might find in the ENI space. So what our team did was they, they not only implemented this model, but they did it in a very uh, clean and elegant way that makes it easy for users to set up and run these complex models and get really compelling results. And on top of that, we also added a liquid volume visualization tool that makes it really easy to understand how these systems are behaving out in the real world. Another area that came out of these conversations with customers is they're interested in getting as accurate results as possible using new advanced turbulence models. And our team went back in response to that interest and reviewed a number of different models and implemented the most powerful ones to give our users more capability in the software. Now, CFD has always had good results with our standard models that we've had in the past. But these new SST K Omega models are showing outstanding accuracy on a wide range of applications, particularly those involving external flow or internal flow applications where, where separation is critical. To go along with the solver improvements, the team also made an investment in the meshing area to give our users a little bit more power in that part of the software as well. So the first area was we parallelized the auto sizing algorithm, which has shown to increase auto sizing speed by a factor of up to 20x on some large models. Now to go along with the turbulence models, we're also giving users the ability to more, more closely control the mesh in the boundary layer in an area that we call mesh enhancement. So users can now employ mesh enhancement gradation to effectively capture all the physics in that really critical portion of the flow. Now lastly, we also expanded what we're offering in the adaptation area. So we introduced this, this capability last year. The response has been great, and people want to use it on more types of models. So we've extended it so that it works with material devices like fans, blowers, and resistances, as well as electronic devices like compact thermal models. And then on top of that, we also upgraded the, uh, the entire adaptation algorithm so that's more efficient than it was in the past. Now, many customers have needs that go beyond just those that are possible within CFD. They want to use uh, tools in combination with one another to tackle more complex analysis. So we did that in two ways with CFD 2014. The first workflow that we opened up was the ability to do thermal stress analysis using simulation mechanical. So you can run a simulation in simulation CFD and then take that data and then import it directly into simulation mechanical as a temperature load to run a thermal stress analysis, which is a common design concern in the electronics world as well as in several industrial machinery applications. Now, in the plastics world, conformal cooling is, is an area of growing interest. And it allows designers to more effectively control mold temperatures um, through the use of, of complex cooling channels. So what we've done is we're allowing users to combine CFD, which will run the cooling portion of the analysis, with mold flow, which runs the actual injection molded process, all in one simulation to allow them to analyze those complex systems. Now, in our conversations with, with users, it's pretty clear that almost everyone wants to get the results faster. So we've continued our investment in parallelization of the solver and together implemented a number of different enhancements that resulted in about a 13% speed up across the board and reduced the memory footprint by about 9%. Now additionally, we also have many customers that are running CFD in the cloud. And we find that they're doing it often when they're on the road or in hotels or in airports when they don't have a really fast internet connection. So we're providing new options that will reduce the amount of data that folks have to upload and download from the cloud so that they can access those results and uh, run their simulations no matter where they are with a really lightweight footprint. 
Another bit of feedback that we got when speaking with customers is that they're using multiple tools in conjunction with one another. And they're often moving between them as they go about their workflows. So in CFD 2014, what we've done is we've made the way that you navigate through the model uh, more consistent with our other simulation products. So we've implemented controls that allow you to uh, move the model back and forth, uh, rotate, pan, and zoom the model in a way that's very similar with our other products. And then furthermore, we also give you the option to, say, rewind through past views so you can get back to a particular um, shot that, that, uh, that was valuable. And then furthermore, on the results visualization side, you can use these tools to zoom in close to the model and then use perspective view to actually get inside the model to look at the flow in different ways. So this is brand new. We haven't been able to, to do this in the past. But now you're able to actually get inside a flow domain and then understand how the flow is moving through it using this perspective camera. Another thing that came out of conversations with customers is that too often data just resides on one machine and it's hard to share it across the entire design team. So in 2014 we're allowing you to push lightweight copies of that, that results data up to the cloud so that you can access it no matter where you are, if, even if you're away from your machine, and you can also uh, share it with others that are either within your organization or other clients that might be outside your company firewall. So we're excited to see what folks are able to do with this. Now, for people who are using a PDM system like Autodesk Vault, we're also offering a direct interoperability with that product as well. So not only can you pull CFD data from Vault and work on it on your machine, but you can also check it back in and link it to a geometry or a file type that's also stored in Vault so that you can understand when that, that simulation data may go out of date. Now lastly, we're also expanding what we can do in terms of process automation. Last year we implemented Python for post-processing and uh, it's really opened up a lot of new possibilities that, uh, uh, that our users have acted on. So if you go to the App Exchange store now, you'll see a number of different apps that have been created that you can download uh, for specific industry types of problems. There's one for a pump curve generator, there's one for a CV calculator for valves, and so more and more will, will, will end up being available in that space. But for 2014, we're also extending what the API can do in terms of uh, setup workflows. So you'll be able to automate setups uh, much more efficiently and then furthermore we've added what are called triggers that allow you to call scripts automatically at different points in the process. So overall uh, it's going to expand what users can do in terms of automating what might otherwise be repetitive tasks. So those are the highlights for Simulation CFD 2014. We're really excited to roll it out and can't wait to see what our customers are able to do.